Today we're going to go over how depreciation and accumulated depreciation work and how a long-term asset impacts the balance sheet, the cash flow, and the income statement. So let's get started. Let's imagine that your client is buying equipment costing 50000 has a useful life of four years, and salvage is estimated to be 2000 Salvage value means that's what you think you'll get for it when you're finished using it and you dispose of it. So which of those is an estimate? Four years is an estimate, and 2000 salvage is an estimate. And sometimes we're wrong, and we have to update our estimates, and there'll be a different video to show you how to handle a change in estimates. So here, let's go ahead and depreciate. We're going to use the straight line method. That's the simplest. The straight line method takes cost, here's your cost, minus your salvage, there's that, and divide it by your useful life. All right, let's do that. Okay, and that would give us the depreciation expense for year one. So cost minus salvage divided by useful life. Let me fix my order of operations here, taking you back to sixth grade math probably. There we go. So 50,000 minus 2 is 48, divided by 4 years is 12,000. So straight line means that every year we'll have the same depreciation. So year 2 will be the same as year 1 and year 3. So depreciation expense for this asset will be 12,000 a year for 4 years and that will show up on the income statement. And so the journal entry in each year would be a debit to depreciation expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation. Here's your accumulated depreciation account. That is a contra asset account that reduces the equipment account, the cost account for the equipment. every year as you have more depreciation expense accumulated depreciation goes up and up so let's illustrate how that works so when you buy the equipment you debit the equipment account and you credit cash and so you've got this reduction to cash in your cash flow statement and then you've got your first year depreciation so debit to depreciation expense and credit to accumulated depreciation and so your book value which is equivalent minus accumulated depreciation is 38,000 at the end of the first year year two the cost didn't change there may be cases where you improve an asset where you add something to it or renovate it and so the cost actually does go up but for this particular piece of equipment for the whole four years we didn't do anything to it we didn't improve on it in any significant way so the cost is the original cost when we depreciate we don't even though we're spreading the cost of that equipment over the years served over the four years in which it's generating revenue for us we leave the cost account alone and we have we reduce it by having this contra account instead of erasing the 50 and making it 12,000 smaller each year but it is going to get 12,000 smaller each year as we book another year's depreciation expense so in year 2 we would debit accumulated debit depreciation expense and in credit accumulated depreciation and so now it's going to be 12,000 plus the next year's expense. So it's accumulating. What's going to happen to year three? It's going to go up by another 12, isn't it? How about year four? It's going to go up by another 12. And so at the end of the fourth year, we are down to our salvage value. This is when we think we're going to get rid of it and what we think we're going to get for it. Now what do you think would happen if we were able to use it for another year? there would just be no depreciation in year five. So if you happen to be able to use it longer than your useful life, you just have a year without any depreciation. It would sit there at its salvage value on the balance sheet. Notice that nothing is happening in the cash flow statement. All the years were depreciating because it hit the cash flow when we paid for it. And then as we depreciate it, it's hitting the income statement, but it's not hitting the cash flow. When we get to the cash flow chapter, we'll revisit that. 
Now what do you think would happen if, instead of keeping it all the way till the end of its useful life, we sold it at the end of year three for 16000 well, it's on the books. Our carrying value or book value is fourteen thousand. So we're going to give up fourteen thousand, and we're going to get sixteen thousand in cash. What's the impact? You're going to have a gain on sale of equipment of how much? Two thousand. That's right. You got sixteen thousand, which in trade was an upgrade. What if you'd gotten twelve thousand? Now what do you have? Now you have a loss. That's right. So when you dispose of an asset, you compare the proceeds, the cash that you got, with the book value at the time you sold it, and you have either a gain or loss on disposal. I've restored the amounts now. What if you sold it at the end of year four and you got 3000 for it? Did you guess a $1,000 gain? You were right. What if you just throw it out? What if you don't get anything for it at the end of year four? What if it's junk and nobody wants it? then you just have a $2,000 loss because you got zero and you gave up carrying value or book value of 2000 So that's the general theory for depreciation expense and accumulated depreciation. We have three methods we're going to study. Straight line, which I demonstrated for you today, double declining balance, and uh, units of production. So those are the three methods that we're going to work. And there's a separate video showing you exactly how to do each of the three methods.